Hello, everyone. How fast can you speak? Can you say 100 words per second? No. Well, it looks like you're no match for Adam, who is able to perform such a feat. Don't believe me? Let's have a look. One of the reasons some reject the literal six-day creation account is because they find it impossible to believe that one man could name every single species of animal on Earth in a single day. Considering there are only 86,400 seconds in a 24-hour period, we are told it's illogical to believe that an individual like Adam, who had never seen animals before the day he named them, could name several million species of animals in one day. I have never heard of this argument before, but oh boy is it funny. It's not necessarily a scientific argument, which is what we normally use, but it's easy to understand and amusing to think about. Let's break this down. Adam had to name all the animals on Earth. I know later on we'll see a creationist respond saying that Adam didn't have to name literally all the animals, but we'll get to that later. There are 8.7 million species of animals on Earth. Adam had to name all of them in a single day. There are 24 hours in a day, so if we do a little math, it turns out that Adam has to name 100 animals per second. Amazing. Not only did he have to say or think a hundred words per second, he also has to have the mental ability to think of the names. I mean, even one animal would take me many minutes to name, and they would just be mashed up compilation of words. For example, give me an elephant and I would have called it long nose, or zebra I would have called it stripe thing. <laughs> Amazing how Adam can just casually come up with new words, elephant or zebra, that have never existed before. His brain must be so wrinkled and his tongue must move at the speed of sound in order to name all the animals in a single day. Didn't realize Adam had such a superpower. Perhaps over a period of a few weeks he could complete such a task, but certainly not in a single day. A few weeks? Few weeks? Please. Okay, let's take the average of the meeting a few here and say it's five weeks. Even if you give Adam five weeks, he would still have to name three animals per second. While that definitely seems more doable, it's still kind of dubious that it is even possible. So yeah, let's just go with the idea that it never happened to begin with. The problem with this objection to Genesis 2 verses 19 and 20 is that they're based on assumptions. The question, could Adam have gathered and named all of the animals on the earth in one day, is misleading because the Bible places certain restrictions on the animals that Adam named. First, Adam's task did not include searching for and gathering all of God's creatures. Rather, as Genesis 2.19 indicates, God brought them to him. Oh man, I wasn't even thinking about the possibility of Adam gathering his own animals. I mean, that would truly, truly be impossible to not only gather, but also name a hundred of them per second. Whew, Adam must have incredibly fast feet. Not to mention, surely he wouldn't even be able to find most of those animals, especially ones with specific habitats that are not easily accessible to humans, such as the bottom of oceans. And what if he misses one? So yeah, I don't think anyone is suggesting the idea that Adam had to find all the animals himself. Second, Genesis 2.20 doesn't say that Adam named all of the animals on earth. The text actually says Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. Excluded from this naming process were sea creatures and creeping things mentioned earlier in the creation account. That entirely depends on which translation of the Bible you're referring to. King James, the most popular one, does say beast on the field. But if you look at some other translations, New Living says all the wild animals, and Christian Standard says every wild animal. I'm sure if you look at the original languages, the meaning can be more accurately deduced, but ultimately let me remind you that the Bible is essentially a game of telephone. Who knows what was originally written on there? For all we know, he named all the plants too. <laughs> no, he definitely did not. Third, the beast God brought to Adam are qualified by the descriptive phrase of the field. Although the precise limits of the term seem unknowable, it's possible that it refers only to those beasts living in Eden. Okay, that's way too much of a stretch. The two translations I mentioned earlier do not mention the word field. Let's just ignore that for the sake of argument. Interpreting the word field in the way you just did is way too much of a stretch. Let's be honest, field most likely would mean, I don't know, the ground? So it would mean all animals that live on land. So we can exclude fish and sea creatures. Maybe birds too, but they can't stay in the air forever, so we'll include them. Since there are about 1 million sea creatures, that gives us a total of 7.7 .7 million species. Adam would still have to name about 89 animals per second. But okay, let's take out birds too. That only includes 9 to 10,000 species, which doesn't do a lot to dent the total. But then again, the verse actually does name out birds specifically. But whatever. Not satisfied? Let's take out insects as well. We haven't actually discovered all of them, but scientists estimate about 5 to 6 million species. 
let's just say 6 million to be generous. Okay, let's subtract all of that out, and we're left with 1.7 million species. Adam will still have to name 20 species per second. Is there anything else to take out? I don't think there is anything else. Also, if you look at the verse carefully, it does say all cattle. Doesn't that kind of imply he named every single cattle individually? Like, not cattle as a species, but each individual member of cattle? <laughs> I don't even want to imagine how fast he would have to name them. Finally, contrary to popular belief, Adam didn't have to name millions of species of animals on day six. Genesis 1 states that the animals were created according to their kinds, not species. Another reason not to believe in the biblical text. Instead of using a word that properly classifies animals, it uses a vague terminology that can be interpreted in a million different ways. Obviously, this is written without a good word of translation in mind and that the idea of individual species didn't exist. So people just use the word kinds as a placeholder. You creationists taking this to the next level and trying to define the word kinds is kind of cringe, but let's continue. The Bible was written long before man invented the modern Linnaean classification system. But if God knew that humans would use this classification system, why not just equate the word kinds to mean species? He can see the future after all. I still don't see a good reason why God would use this word that is just incredibly vague and unscientific. It's more likely that creationists are twisting it to fit their own agenda, especially the one against evolution. The kinds of animals Adam named on the sixth day of creation were probably very broad, more like groups of birds and land animals rather than specific species. Okay, so then tell me, what are these names? What is the kind of a raccoon? What is the kind of a horse? I assume when you say a group of animals, that is the name of a group of species? Can you give me some examples? Are you going to pull a scientific terminology to fit with kinds? Because Adam certainly didn't name any of those. So if we don't use any of the names he gave, what's the point of that anyway? No need to defend it to the death. And I think we'll all be happier if you just admit it didn't happen, especially if it doesn't matter anyway. Adam likely gave animals names like turtle, dog, or elephant. Not special names like pig nose, soft shell turtle, or Alaskan husky. Your definition is still incredibly vague, especially since you're trying to appeal to layman words. In that case, tell me who this is, please. See, we only have these unscientific terms like dog or cat because they are commonly seen. But when it comes to more obscure animals, we don't really have a common name. These names are clearly given by more modern humans, not by a person who lived in a garden 6,000 years ago who supposedly would have had equal access to all the animals. All of these textual considerations suggest that the events of day six could have been accomplished easily within a 24-hour period. Adam didn't have to spend a great deal of time pondering what he would call each animal. He was created with the ability to speak and reason. I just don't understand that if God gave Adam the reasoning and thinking skills to name every animal, why he wouldn't just name them himself, especially since he already knows what Adam would name them. What a waste of Adam's time, don't you think? If a three-year-old can look at a book and call the names of 60 different kinds of animals in 60 seconds, I have no problem believing that Adam, having been created directly by the hand of God and made in his image, had the ability to name hundreds of birds and land animals in just one hour. Yeah, but a kid would already know the names of these animals. Adam would have to come up with names from scratch. There's a pretty big difference there. But whatever, I honestly don't care much for this argument because it's not very scientific and therefore is just sort of a fun thought. At the end of the day, whether or not Adam actually named the animals is a topic not too relevant to things like the beginning of the universe and the evolution of life, so we'll just leave it at that. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Fireshard, Alan Morton, JN, and Miss Fixit. I'll see you in the next one.